In this episode, you will learn what is important to know about RCDs. Only in the 1970s, the RCD became common in electrical installations. In the US, it was called GFCI, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, and was often built in a socket outlet. In Europe, it became mandatory in the 80s, first in Austria and then in Germany, only in bathrooms. Since 2018, RCDs are mandatory now in all circuits. Today, almost everywhere in the world, RCDs are common in residential and non-residential electrical installations. In principle, there are two systems available, the voltage-independent RCCBs and the voltage-dependent RCCBs. In the British standard countries, the voltage-dependent ones are common, whereas in other countries, for example in Germany and Austria, they are not allowed. The picture on the right shows a voltage-independent version. Let us have a look on a modern state-of-the-art protection in an electrical installation. An MCB can detect overcurrent and protect the wires from overheating. It can, however, not detect residual currents, for example, flowing through a person touching a life part. The RCD can detect residual currents and protect against the electric shock. It can also detect arc faults between phase and ground, and so it can also protect against fires. But it can, however, not detect an arc fault between phase and neutral and serial arc faults. The ultimate protection can be achieved by combining MCBs, RCDs and AFDDs. For searches, an SPD should be considered in every installation. Residual current devices are available in various forms for many different applications. The classic RCCBs are protecting against earth faults and usually are combined with several overload protection devices like MCBs. RCBO combine these functions in one device. They are used for a single circuit. MRDCs are usually used to monitor earth faults. However, with the contact, they also can trip a protection device like a circuit breaker. These devices are not suitable for people protection. The electronic RCDs or ERCDs are depending on a supply voltage. The advantage is that they can be built in a smaller housing. But in many countries, voltage independent RCDs must be installed. The F200 and DS200 series of ABB's RCDs are part of the entire range of System Pro M Compact. The new type B RCDs are the new members of the System Pro M Compact. Type B is becoming more and more important as AC DC and DC AC inverters are used more often, e.g., for PV systems and EVCI. The main reason for the use of RCDs is the protection against electric shock. There are many possibilities for people to get an electric shock. For example, when replacing a broken light bulb and the circuit is not switched off, or when hanging a picture on the wall and scratching the cable with a screw or a nail. Typically, the sensitivity of RCDs for people protection is set as 30 mA. This turned out to be a good compromise between reliable power supply and protection. However, for some circuits, for example in bathrooms or children's bedrooms, a 10 mA RCD could be a good choice. This diagram illustrates the impact of an electric current flowing over or through a human's body. If the current is high enough and long enough, it can finally be fatal. There are other possibilities to protect against the electric shock. One is the extra or double insulation of devices like the shown hairdryer. The other option is to reduce the voltage to the extra low voltage of 50 respective 25 volt in medical treatment areas. Most electric toys are operating with 12 volt or less. In a TN earthing system, one of the points of the transformer is connected to earth, usually the star point in a three phase system. The body of the electrical device is connected to earth via this earth connector at the transformer. In case of a fault and the phase being connected to the body of the device, 
the protection device, for example an MCB, will trip. RCDs provide additional protection in case the connection is not solid enough to trip the MCB or in case of a direct contact. This should be 30 mA sensitive RCDs. In a TT or Terra Terry uh, earthing system, the protective earth connection for the consumer is provided by a local earth electrode and there is another independent install at the transformer. There is no earth wire between the two. Due to the higher and not always predictable resistance between the transformer grounding and the local grounding, it cannot guarantee that the MCB would really trip. Therefore, an RCD must be installed at the entry point of the building. This can be a 300 mA or 500 mA selective RCD. For people protection, RCDs with 30 mA must be installed in the individual circuits. The vectorial sum of all currents in the three phases and the neutral is always zero. In case of an earth fault, for example in case someone touches a live conductor, a part of the current bypasses the toroidal core and the sum is not zero anymore. Then in the green secondary winding a small current will be induced. That will then trip the voltage independent relay and consequently the RCCB. The test button circuit of the 4-pole RCCB's F200 series, regardless of the rating, is wired inside the device between terminal 5, 6 and 7, 8. And this is L3 and, and N. There are different types of RCDs available. The cost increases significantly with the functionality. So from a commercial point of view, it makes sense to select the right RCD depending on the application. If the connection devices are mainly of ohmic loads, like heaters, it would be sufficient to use an AC type. However, nowadays many switch mode power supplies and electronic inverters are common also in private homes. These devices, devices generate pulsating DC that could run through a RCD. If this DC value is bigger than 6 mA, the RCD can get blind. It would not be detecting a real fault anymore. In some countries the AC type is not allowed, so the A type must be used instead. In case there are inverters with high frequency installed, for example a frequency drive for pumps, etc., it is recommended to install a type F, which can handle also high frequencies in the system. For some application, it is mandatory to install a type B RCD. This is a universal type which can handle high frequencies and pure DC. Two popular examples are AC charging units for electric vehicles and, for example, temporary power distribution for construction sites. The tripping time is not adjustable. It is set according to a predetermined time following the standard. The RCD has a nominal current, in this example here, 40 amps. It must not be used with a higher operating current. Therefore, the overload protection must be smaller or equal to the nominal current of the RCD. So in the example, the MCB should be 40 amps or smaller. The rated making and breaking capacity, IM, is 1000 amps. The rated conditional short circuit current is 10 kilo amps protected by a suitable short circuit protection device. Especially in TT grid systems, a main RCD is installed upstream of the installation close to the handover point from the utility company. But it is also recommended in TN systems. The RCDs have to be coordinated so that the highest rated type is upstream and the lower rated one is downstream. In the example on the left, the type AS, the selective one, is upstream of the normal type A. The type F and type B are connected in parallel. On the right, the type B is installed after the DC-AC inverter of the PV system. The downstream RCDs are all rated lower accordingly. Never install a higher rated type downstream of a lower rated type as shown in the picture. Follow the rules as mentioned. The upstream RCD should be about three times the sensitivity of the downstream RCD. And it should be an APR type, time delayed, or an S type, selective. 
There are two options for selectivity. One is to rate the upstream RCD three times the sensitivity current of the downstream RCD. This is called amperometric selectivity and provides only a partial selectivity. The second option, so-called chronometric selectivity, provides full selectivity. This can be achieved by using selective versions of RCDs. The circuit for an EVCI should always be separate from the rest of the installation. If the charging station is equipped with a DC fault detection, an RCD type A is sufficient. Otherwise, a type B is required. Always consider SPDs for overvoltage protection. Type 1 plus 2 would be a good choice, as the charging station most probably is mounted outside the building. This is an example of a single-family home with a selective main RCCB and several groups individually protected by RCCBs and RCBOs. The RCBOs could for example be 10 mA versions for the protection of the bathrooms. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon in another Building Academy learning episode.